Okay, so Nisha, what is the most broke ass meal you've eaten? I bought like a pack of cheap like noodles, you know the thing? The 9p noodles. Yeah, and then cooked them and put like a beef stock pot in it just to make it taste a bit beefy. Ooh, classy. John Yules was a man so adverse to spending money and tight-fisted that he could hold a penny in his hand that would then turn to a shilling out of pure fear. And while you might think, given this description, Yules was a poor man, it was in fact quite the opposite, and he was a multi-multi-millionaire. He just really hated spending money. So John Yules had a lot of money. Yes, he was the equivalent of a modern-day millionaire because he lived, like, you know, obviously, many years ago. But it's noted that before his fifth birthday, his father unfortunately passed away and he inherited the equivalent of £8 million. And if that wasn't enough when he was like, you know, a slightly older non-child person, his uncle passed away and he inherited the equivalent of a further 15 million pounds. So it's not like he grew up very poor and just kept the habits he developed being poor. He was always a tight-fisted bastard who hated spending money. Yeah, you'd think with someone who grew up with money, they'd just spend, spend like no tomorrow. Like the atypical like trust fund brat you'd get today, or like the Instagram rich kid but like never learn the value of money because they just grew up with what essentially amounted to an infinite amount of it. Like the kids who get like cars for their 16th birthday yeah. and complain because it's not the right colour. Well, since you mentioned it, Nisha, before we like, you know, continue with John Yules' life story and how much of a tight bastard he was, uh, what is like the most spoiled rich kid thing you've ever seen? Like either in real life or just on television? Probably like that where it's the 16 year old's birthday. It's the sweet 16. The super sweet 16. When they, have, they throw a party and they get a car and the, whole, the entire day, nothing is enough for them. Mm -hmm. Nothing is enough. The yeah. car's the wrong colour. Yeah, it's the oh, worst day of my life. Mean, if someone bought me a car, I'd be so grateful. No matter what it is, you know, it's transport. It's a fucking it's car. It's independent. Yeah. But no, but it's, it's just, the wrong colour. They'd, they'd get like a Mercedes be like, no, I don't like it. I wanted a Ferrari or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, so uh, do you like that kind of show? I don't mean like as in the sense that you enjoy watching it, but do you like that feeling of just like, yeah. oh, this person's an arsehole? Yeah, I like watching TV shows that annoy me. <laughs> well, I have a show for you. And folks at home will feel the same way because I randomly like, stumbled across a TV show on Netflix called Yummy Mummies. And it's about this group of mums in Australia who are very, very rich. But one of them is the kind of rich way. It's all about just flaunting their wealth, but in a really obvious way. Yeah. And they're obsessed with like Versace. Because obviously Versace is a well-known, like, you know, high prestige brand. And um, I forget the exact name, but it's a very specific kind of champagne that's just known for being expensive. And the show is infuriating, but also really addictive because of just how stupid that person is. Yeah. It's like in one episode, for example, it's like, oh, we're going to put on a baby shower. So sounds great. Um, oh, oh, everything has to be white and you can only have this specific brand of champagne. So that's fine. Uh, also, you need to clear out your entire shelf of alcohol. I only want this champagne on display. Sure, that's fine. And while they're setting up this baby shower, like, the camera is very obviously trying to make it look like the hotel is just being like, you know, really like difficult yeah. and trying to like, you know, ruin this person's day. But the lady they show is the most accommodating person you've ever fucking seen because she just sits there and complies with every request this fucking moron makes, save for the one where she asks her to cancel a wedding in the slightly bigger room next door because she wants to have the bigger room for her um, baby shower. Of course she does. Yeah, but what's really great though is like a bit later in the series, um, this that idiot gets invited to another mother's, like you know, um, baby shower, yeah. where instead of being held in a, like you know a hotel ballroom and everything's just gold and champagne, it's this really classy upscale event yeah. where they're like in the middle of the woods and it's really private and there's music and it's really muted and downplayed, but still very clearly a fucking expensive affair. And that woman, because she is a moron, sits there and looks at the champagne and doesn't recognise the brand. And because she doesn't recognise the brand, goes, well, I had better champagne at my wedding. To which the waiter goes, well, actually, this champagne's more expensive than the one you got. And the reason you've not... And I, in his head, you know, he's going. And the reason you've not fucking heard of it is because you're all about image and you don't know what actual quality is. You just get it because you know it's expensive. And it's like, oh, it's so satisfying. So good. Oh, but like, watch it. it. Like, you will go mad. Like, she has an entire closet full of baby clothes. Fair enough, but all the baby clothes have to be like Versace, they have to be Armani, they have to be Calvin Klein, yeah. but they have to have like the big fucking logo on the front, which means that it's from like, you know, the outlet version of those like brands. Because isn't it a very popular adage that the more expensive a piece of clothing is, the smaller the logo is, because obviously the quality speaks for itself. Yeah. And she doesn't understand it because she's a fucking moron who's like, no, it has to have a big Versace logo on it. <laughs> and she goes like the Versace Hotel. 
And she goes into a big room that looks like a fucking Versace display. It's, oh, it's so bad. Watch it. It's amazing. I know what I'm doing this week. Oh, mate, tr <laughs> like, trust me. Just go back and watch it. You'll find yourself being like, I can't believe how stupid this person is. I used to work in super upscale establishments like that, and I know what actual wealth looks like. Yeah. Because the story is like, money talks, wealth whispers. And you can tell when someone is actually fucking minted. Yeah. And the woman's dad is like very clear, like an old school businessman where he walks around in jeans and a t-shirt. But you know that's like a $500 t-shirt and he don't give a fuck. Yeah, because he doesn't flaunt it like she but You don't have to, because money, like, you know, yeah. if you're rich as fuck, it'll speak for itself. You don't need to, and it's, just trust me guys, go watch it. All right, so John Yule's was the equivalent of a modern day multi-millionaire. Yes, um, he could have realistically like lived in the lap of luxury his entire life and never wanted for anything and still have had the equivalent of millions of pounds left in his bank account when he passed away. So you've talked about misers on this channel before, mm -hmm. so I'm guessing he didn't live like a millionaire. No, he lived, I think, worse than some homeless people did at the time. And he was so committed to saving money, like some of the things about his life sound made up. And if it wasn't for, like, you know, historical sources backing them up, would sound fake, because you can't imagine you had, why would a millionaire do this shit? An example being that he absolutely refused to ever buy clothes and would instead um, wear things he found on the street, would get into fist fights with homeless people to steal their clothes, or would just sew rags together that he found on the floor and use them as makeshift clothing instead. Do you know what's really funny about this guy as well? He looks a suspicious amount like Mr. Burns. But I'm not even kidding, like a picture of Mr. Burns and John Yule's being behind me, like, he looks so much like Mr. Burns, which makes it even funnier to me. Well, seeing as he, he didn't mind getting his clothes off the streets and beating up homeless people for them. Literally just beat up homeless people and just stole their clothes. I'm going to assume he had no personal hygiene. No, um, he never washed, he never cleaned himself, unless absolutely necessary. Or he found a free way to do it, such as like jumping in a river or something like that. But obviously he didn't want to like jump in a river and then leave his clothes on the side because someone might steal them because that's how he got them after all. So he'd just jump in fully clothed and walk around piss wet through until he dried. And again, it sounds made up. And if this was a story about just one guy, I could believe people thinking that. But there are multiple cases from history of people doing this exact thing. One of which we talked about on the channel before, Daniel Dancer, who would like skulk around the back of butcher shops and fist fight dogs to steal what bones. The fuck? And the thing is, you can see that kind of attitude today, just on a less, like, you know, visual scale. Like, you've got people like fucking, was it Jeff Bezos? Mm. The literal richest man in human history. And he ums and ahs over, like, raising the wages of his employees about, like, one fucking dollar. So you could afford to give them all, like, $40 an hour and still be richer than 99% of the world. It's crazy. Uh, yeah, there's that saying, isn't there? That's how the rich stay rich. Yeah. They don't spend any money. And I think there's a certain point of wealth where you, that you get to where it is impossible to ever spend it all. But like, when you get to the level of someone like Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos, you have so much money that you literally cannot spend it all. And the fact it's still hoarded away is just baffling and with those stories in mind you could transplant someone like Daniel Dancer or John Yules into the modern day and they would just be like a Jeff Bezos just hoarding all their money away <laughs> refusing to spend it even though they've got more than any one person could ever hope to spend in their lifetime I can't imagine having that amount of money like there's been times where like me, me and my mum have sat down and thought if we won the lottery, Everyone's what will we yes. spend our money on? And it's always trips around the world, buy our own houses, new cars, all that sort of thing but then I was reading something the other day that was like, people who come into a lot of money um, need to be careful on what they spend it on. Because obviously you buy expensive things and the upkeep is expensive and that's how you end up becoming skin pretty yeah, I much. I forget the name of the guy it was. He's famous in the UK at least. Uh, the guy who won the lottery, who was a bin man. Yeah. Spent all the money on buying a giant mansion, um, drugs, and he used to hold like um, destruction derby type events in his back garden. Right. And then obviously he bought a mansion with like two million quid, but then didn't realize a two million pound mansion costs like 200 grand a year just to keep just to keep it looking like it is. Yeah. And went bankrupt, and now he's thinking he's back to being a bin man. Great. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever come into a good amount of money, just save. You just save it, yeah, but people don't do that, do they? No. You get excited. I mean, I mean, it's understandable you don't want to buy things, but you have to think of the future. Just put, I'd put everything into savings. Well, there's a smaller scale example of this, and it's this American documentary where they gave a random homeless guy $100,000, like completely tax-free, yeah. and with no strings attached, just to see what he'd do. And like halfway through the documentary, he buys like a $26,000 truck, so a quarter of the money he had, and then gets asked, well, what are you doing to secure the future? Well, he'll never run out. So he just spent a quarter of it, because obviously, 
when you've lived off nothing your entire life, that amount of money seems like it never run out. Yeah. And it does. <laughs> and that's the problem. Yeah. I mean, 100,000 is not really that, that much. In, in the, to, it's a lot of money until it's not. Then you've got someone like John Yules, who was rich enough where it doesn't fucking matter, just refused to spend it. All right, so I'm, I'm eager to know what is this about him fighting a rat for his dinner? Well, like Mr. Daniel Dancer, John Yules hated paying for food and would reportedly get all kinds of excited when he just found free food on the floor. Hey, free fucking food. And it's noted that whenever he happened upon free ground food, he would literally fill his boots and just cram every like, you know, spare piece of storage he had about his person with the food and would hold on to it and eat it even after it went moldy. And it's also noted that he would get very annoyed if he happened to lose any of this food which, as you might imagine, happened all the time, given the shambolic nature of his appearance. Because, yeah, if you've got clothes that are just sewn together rags, the pockets on them aren't going to be great. And there's a famous story about him where he rode for, I think, like two hours at night in the rain and then beat down the door of a friend's house because he left a sandwich in his pocket of his coat. So he left his coat at his house and then remember there was a sandwich in the pocket. So he rode through the night in the rain to like, you know, kick the shit out of his front door, demanding his sandwich back because he was like, he, because he had it in his head that his friend was going to steal and eat the sandwich, which means that not only was he insane, he's one of those people where if like they lend you a fiver, that's all you hear about for like the next six months. Yeah. And have you ever like dealt with a person like that? Fortunately, no. <laughs> oh, okay then, because I have on like a few occasions and there's just nothing more infuriating than the person who knows exactly how much money you owe you then never lets it go. Like, you know, for example, say if we went out and I bought you a drink, yeah. it'd just be, you just get the next one and it'll, eventually it'll all even out. And the story that sticks in my head is when I went out for a drink with a person like that. Yeah. And I, they bought me a drink, like it's part of a round, and then I asked them, oh, I'll get you one back. What do you want? And they, I, they, they said, I want this. So I went, what's the bar? I get it, come back. I go, well, that was like 369 and yours was 420. So I just want to get rid of like, you know, take care of the other 50p. I just remember thinking, no. you absolute, like, we're on a, like, you fucking prick. Like, what? And then all throughout the night, they were, like, Joe tallying it up in the head. And Joe really got me. I thought, oh, maybe, like, they're a bit hard up. No, they had plenty of money. Just a tight ass. And the reason it sticks in my head so clear, though, is because for the next round, I got a cheaper drink, thinking, I don't want to deal with this shit again. And then when they got the same drink again, they'd made no mention of the fact they owed me 20 fucking pence. It's like, yeah, I'll bet you fucking won't. Ugh. It's different when it's the way round, yeah. And I don't <laughs> hang out with that person anymore because fuck them. You just don't need that kind of energy in your life. So I'm guessing that John Rules saw a rat with some food and thought, you know, I want that food. And I'd love to tell you that it was that, but no, it's much more disgusting because the rat didn't even have any food. It just had a half-eaten moor hen, which is like a duck-like creature, yeah. and was dragging it out of a river. So not only was it half eaten, it was also like, you know, half decomposed. And John Yule saw that and was like, I'm fucking having that bastard. Said to have jumped over a railing to get down onto the bank to scare away this rat to grab this half eaten creature that he'd been dragging out of a river. And remember back in those days, people just dumped shit straight into the river. Yeah. So not only is it half eaten and like half rotted, it was also probably covered in human effluence. And he's like, yeah, man, that's my lunch right there. And it gets just a little bit worse because there is uh, another story about when he found a half-eaten pike similarly by the side of a lake. Right. And a pike, people know it's this ugly looking fish creature, not known for being very tasty, and found halfway through eating it that the pike had eaten another fish. So he, in his half-eaten fish, found another half-eaten fish and he said to have celebrated like he just won the lottery because he was getting two dinners for one. He literally has no line. There is no line. Yeah, that he would not cross if it <laughs> saved him money. And do you know what the most surprising thing about all of this is? What? Is that story about him getting a sandwich where he had a friend. Because that's the thing I find the most unbelievable, that someone like that would have mates. Yeah. Because I would not be friends with that person. <laughs> so that story about Yules travelling through the night in the rain to beat down his friend's door to get half a sandwich just reminds me so much of those people who just keep the running tally in their head of how much money you owe them, despite not really needing to. Yeah. And have you ever encountered a person like that on like a night out or anything? Because they are the fucking worst. Fortunately not, because most people I go out with don't give a shit about like, 
owing specific amounts of money. We just like, if we owe someone else a drink, we'll just buy a drink and then it'll carry on like Almost that like your friends, yeah? Yeah. Or it's because it's a social gathering and at that point, a few pence here and there, you don't give a shit about because by the end of the night, chances are it'll all come good. And if it doesn't, the next time yeah. you'll work it out then. But I have encountered a person like that and I don't hang out with them anymore. And it's all because of one night out where like, you know, we were buying rounds, as you often do when you're on nights out, it's just easier. I'm going to the bar, I'll get this round, this person gets the next one. By the end of the night, everyone spent 20 quid, but you've all had five drinks. Yeah. And this guy, I said, what do you want to drink? I said, yeah, I think it's like cider or something like that. Gets me the cider, comes back, puts it down, thought no more of it. My round happens, okay, so what does everyone want? Duh, 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 duh. Come back, give the guy his pint. Turns out though, his pint cost like 3.69 or something like that. Mine was like a Copperberg, so about four pounds something. Yeah. And you're saying, oh, well, there's a 50p difference here. I'd want to give me that. I remember thinking about you sad fucking bastard that you're on this night out with mates, ostensibly with mates, and we're yeah. supposed to, like, you know, chatting, having a good time, and you give a fuck about 50 fucking pence. And I get it, it's his 50p. Mm. But also I'd like to point out later in the evening, because I was aware of this, I asked him for a cheaper drink. Yeah. And then when the next round came up and I gave him his more expensive drink, he didn't give a fuck about the 20p he owed me. He never brought that up, did it? And I didn't want to be a dick and bring it up. Then I think that's what they, I think that's what people like that rely on, yeah. that people being too polite to do the same thing back yeah. or being too polite to say, no, fuck you, it's 50p who gives a shit. And then that by the end, it's, oh God, it drives me mad. Count yourself lucky you've never encountered a person like that because they are insufferable. Have you, have you not had like even the one of just, oh, um, I bought a takeaway tonight and then they just send you a message every single day of like, you're going to send me that fiver, mate. You're going to send me that fiver, mate. No. Um, like if I know I owe people money, I will pay them as soon as I can. Yeah, so I don't, I don't want that on my back, like, you owe me this, you owe me this. And then if it's like with friends, it doesn't really matter that much because we just owe each other drinks yeah. or whatever we do. We we'll just, we'll just pay it back at some point. So I've, yeah, I don't really have that much of an issue. I mean, I'm one of those people that I have lent money to people and they've not paid me back. But usually it's not a big amount of money and I've like, I've reminded them every so often saying, you know, I, you know, you still owe me this. And they're like, yeah. oh yeah, well, I'll give it to you at this point or I've just had a bad week. And I was just like, give them like benefit of the doubt. But I'm like, if they don't pay me back, it's fine because then that's like leverage. If, if they ever ask me for money, <laughs> if they ever ask me for money again. Look at that. Fucking I, loan I, shark I, Nisha I, on I the go. Yeah, you, you still owe me this money, so I'm not, I'm not giving you any more money. So, yeah. My approach has always been lend people money the first time. If you don't get paid back, never lend them it again. Yeah. It's usually that simple, but yeah. like, there's the one of just like, yeah, there's, the difference is 50p. I just want to sort that out. It's like, if it had been like a tenner, I could understand. That's understandable. But it's like, it's 50 fucking p and we're all paying on card. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. 